Hi, I'm Mel Gavala Virta, and this one is about Bus Waza Tube Amp Expander. Well, what is this? In short, this is a reactive load, power soak, audio interface and effect processor, all in one housing. So, the front panel, it has the reactive load section and you can control the reactive load, how it behaves. Like when you have a tube amp and it's connected to a speaker cabinet. Those work in conjunction. They work together. The amp behaves a certain way when it has a certain cabinet connected. Not just the sound, but also the behavior of the amp. So with these resonance Z and presence Z knobs, you can kind of change the reactive load, change the cabinet type. Like, like I said, different cabinets, they, the amp, they make amp, the amp behave a little bit differently. So with these two, you can basically have like the Sur, what I have here, my all-time favorite, I've used it a long time, it's absolutely fantastic. It's so reactive load, it has its own thing. But with this one, you can actually make these two like several different reactive load cabinets. And then this knob, this is kind of like power soak. So you can have your cabinet connected to and then you can change the output volume of the cabinet with this. So you can crank your amp and still play at bedroom levels. Like the Bugera power soak. I have. So this is basically reactive load, several different reactive loads and a power soak. And then with what we have here, here's effects. There's delay, reverb, compression and EQ. And here on the rig section, so there you can have like, let's say rig number one. You can have a certain impulse response here a cabinet, speaker, microphone combination. And then you can also determine whether it has like delay on it and then you can control the delay on and off here and with a full switch, programmable full switch, MIDI full switch and EQ and so on. And you can store up to 10 different like rigs here. So let's say you have a distorted sound you know, certain type of cabinet, then when you put this, then you, you know, maybe you have a clean sound from the amp, 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 it's certain type of cabinet, one by 12 or whatever, and you can control this, you know, with a food switch, so very handy, live also. And with this, you can determine how much there is re reverb. So, you know, if you feel that, okay, on some rig, you have a little bit more reverb, you can tame it down, down with this. And then, there's a line-out level, which determines how hot the signal that is coming out of the reactive load is going to your DAW, mixer, front of house, and so on. And then there's a phones level, so you can connect your headphones to this and, you know, crank your tube and just play with headphones. Okay, what we have back here? It uh, looks like a lot, but it's actually not. Quite simple. Speaker outs. So you can connect two speaker cabinets, real cabinets to this, and then you can control the output level of the cabinets with this. And this also has a 100 watt solid state amp, so let's say if you have a really small output combo amp that you just like the sound of it, but it isn't loud enough for big stages, then you can actually increase the volume, the output volume of the amp by this. And if you have a 100 watt amp you're playing in a small club, you can crank the amp and then you can lower the output volume. 
with this knob. So here you connect your speaker cabinets. And then this one, like it says, from tube amp, max 150 watts. So this takes up to 150 watts of, you know, power. I mean, the Sir takes 100 watts, PV5150, what I have is 120 watts, but I can easily run with it, because you may know, after you turn the volume past 4, 5 and 5150, it becomes really mushy and loose. So the sweet spot of 5150, to my opinion, is around between 3, 4. So obviously then it's not pushing the full 120 watt out from the amp. So, but to be safe, you know, I have 150 watt is plenty. I mean, Marshall Major is 200 watt, but yeah. And then here's the ohms, which, you know, you have an 8 ohm output speaker out from the amp. You, you know, you switch with this. And then there's the input level. You know, if you have a small amp, 10 to 50 watt amp, you put it here. If you have a 50 watt, around 50 watt amp here, 100 watt here. So it kind of senses the, you know, you, that you can match the, this with your amp. And then there's line out, left and right, so it's a stereo, so you can control it with this. So you can hook this into your audio interface, like I will do soon. And you can actually record stereo two tracks simultaneously if you want. Or you can connect this directly to front of house mixer or monitor mixer on your stage. And this has a separate mono output to front of house. And how th this difference from these two? Well, this is no matter what you do here on the on the level, it doesn't affect the front of house. I guess they thought it because you may know you play on a show in the beginning of the show, your amp is on a certain level. And then <laughs> when the show ends, you suddenly realize that you have <laughs> turned it louder and louder. And usually front of house engineers don't like that. At least they've said to me many times, hey man, <laughs> you know, the levels were really good. I was able to get a really good, nice balanced mix. But then you, you know, you turn the volume during the show all the way up. And at the end of the show, the guitar was basically coming from the stage and not from the PA. And then if that's the case, then the front of us can't really do anything because he can't make it quieter. <laughs> if it's real loud. So I guess they thought that no matter what the player is doing, whether he's increasing the volume or not, the front of a house will get the same consistent signal level. What is a bit con, because in my experience, the sound engineers in my bands I played during the years, they usually always want to have two signals to their front of house mixer. So they can pan it left and right, balance it, maybe add some stereo delay or whatever. But this one, you will only get a mono. Usually they always mic the cab with two microphones. Like in Syrah, I'm using the new neighbor. Some guy said that I, it needs to be stereo. I need to have two signals to the front of house so I can pan the guitars and make them wider or narrower. So, but so this would it's a little bit surprising that this is only mono and not stereo. But again, you can send these two to front of house, but then you have to make sure that you don't, you know, <laughs> increase the volume too much on the stage or the front of house guy won't be happy. Okay, and then there's a food switch options. You can hook several different food switches here. Boss's own GAFC and stuff and like, you know, MIDI switcher of your, your, your choosing. So that's pretty cool also. So you can control all these things, rigs and stuff with a food switch for, you know, live applications. Then USB, you can control this to your computer and to your door. So this can be used also as an audio interface. But obviously, because there's no mic inputs or anything, so you can only use this to record guitars. So like I have here, there's eight inputs. I have there, you know, microphone, line outs, vocal mics, DIs, everything connected to that. But 
you can use this also as an audio interface if you just want to record your guitar to your DAW. And with the USB connected, I will show you soon, there's an editor also where you can edit your rigs and stuff and then you have to have this connected via U with the USB to computer. And then there's effect loop. This is really handy too. So there is effects like I mentioned here, but you can add more effects to this if you want. You know, maybe chorus, whatever phrase, or the reverb or delay that you, you like. And if the amp, like my old 800s, this doesn't have an effect loop. So with this you can actually make them to have effect loop. So in a way, the effects, they, well, they won't be on the amp loop, but they will be like, kind of like post effects. What you do when you're recording, you know, you record usually your guitar signal without time-based effects, and then the mixing engineer can add them to the track in the to the track inserts afterwards. So after the amplifier cabinet, and then you add the delays and stuff. So you can do the similar thing with this, but like live situation. And then there's different ground lifts and you know knobs. You can tweak this a little bit more. I will show you the editor quickly and then I will actually hook this up and show how this works and sounds in reality. Okay, so now we are on the screen and here's the editor and here's an IR loader. So you can load third party IRs to this. And first we need to connect this. So what you do, you choose Waza tie, which is this. Okay, now as you can see, I have only one IR there in a one bank, so you can load up to 32 IRs here, third party IRs. And this IR is my signature IR, Palo Virtuos from Ines Bulgren's Lead and Clean Pack. Okay, so that's that, that's pretty handy. And then what we have here. There's different rigs, like this knob. When I'm turning this, you can see the rigs change on the screen. Okay, so here's like the pre-made rigs, you know, factory presets. You can change them, obviously. So you can see here that there's one signal going to, to line out and one, one to speaker. Rig number two, and then there's EQ involved, and you can control the EQ on, off, with here. Reverb, you can, you see the level when I'm turning, it, now it's off, and then you can increase the level of this rig with here, and you can determine the lots of tweakable things. So, 10 different rigs. And then there's my own IR. So, and I can add delay on this one too. You know, I can set it here. And the amp sim. Here I can, can't can choose any microphones, because this is a Jens Bugren's IR, so it's, it's third-party IR, so it is what it is. It's fantastic. But I can choose the room microphone, so how, how it, like, uh, you know, is, is, is there room anechoic is that it's completely dry in the front. This is kind of what you probably would like to have when you're recording. So then you can add maybe a reverb or something afterwards. And then there's a couple of rooms. I'm gonna keep it here on the small room. So it's more like, it feels like when I'm gonna play soon, that it's the sound is like kind of similar what I have in the room to you. Pretty cool. And then there's, you can choose like create live set. So you can create, okay, this live set is this one and you know, you can program your MIDI switcher or whatever switcher, you know, song by song or whatever. Quite basic, really easy to use. And here, if we choose this 4x12 standard, this is, I believe, a Mesa Boogie. Here you can choose cabinets. There's different cabinets. 
and slots to your own you combo one by ten one by twelve two by twelve four by twenty four by twelve and so on you know four by step I guess this is like a standard mesa I think this is uh, oversized mesa these are two different Marshall cabs uh, this is a vintage Marshall cab with uh, green backs and V30s and then you can choose different microphones microphone distances and so on and these actually sound pretty good usually the ready-made IRs that comes with these devices a little bit mm, so and so but I, I really like a few of these especially the vintage Marshall cab with green backs and V30s and the Mesa stack Mesa cab with the V30s when I choose these when I played with these before this video I had I had no idea what these were and it was quite funny to realize that my favorites were the favorites that I probably used the most Mesa cabinet with V30s or old Marshall cabinet with V30s and greenbacks this is basically the Fryett cabinet this has Eminence P50s and they're like a combination of V30s and greenbacks together and the cabinet is kind of like a combination of Mesa and Marshall so it's it has best of both worlds my absolute favorite cabinet okay enough yapping I will hook this up to the amplifier and so on and cabinet and then I will show you how to work with this So now I have my TSL, Jason 2000 TSL, connected into the tube amp expander, and from the tube amp expander, signal goes also on the cabinet. What you just heard was on the cabinet. It's it's not mic because I have the the cables connected to this. Didn't have enough <laughs> cables. Okay, clean sound. So. Like I said, with this, these two knobs, you can kind of choose what kind of reactive load the amp sees in a way. And there's suggestions, you know, like, for example, this rig number one, this is a Mesa Boogie cabinet. And boss suggests there's a diagram here that you put the, these two low positions, then it kind of mimics how a Mesa Boogie cabinet would react. Metallica. So this was my favorite, like I said, I didn't watch any of the, you know, diagrams, whatever, so this was my kind of favorite for heavy, and I was surprised to learn that, okay, this actually is kind of like Mesa Boogie with V30s, and this is 
this set like this, it, the reactive load reacts a similar way than a Mesabugi cabinet would react. And then another my favorite was to have this in a high mid and this high and this rig number four. So, and I was happy to find out that this is actually now, when these knobs are set like this, this reacts a similar way than a vintage Marshall cabinet. And this rig number four was indeed <laughs> vintage Marshall cabinet with greenbacks and V30s combination. Okay, so then back to clean and then this Rig 5, this was like a 4x12, kind of like fender cabinet. And super old drive on, let's take it off. the solo boost on, then when I took it off, then I kind of delay. Like that. Okay, then let's check check out the slot number two, like I said. Jens Bulgren IR in there. And now the Jens Bulgren IR, now this reacts, the IR or the amp reacts like it will be connected into a vintage Marshall cabinet with the Bulgren IR. <laughs> Thousand has tons of gain, it's now two. <laughs> okay, well, this sounds really good, but when we move it here, it sounds also good with the when the reactive load reacts, like kind of will be connected. To a Mesa Boogie cabinet. And with this IR, let's just say it's not a coincidence. <laughs> Okay, let's keep it that way. Boogie cabinet, valve shows IR. And then, you know, we cannot delay. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, now I was now I was recording to with mono. Let me just press on the recording on the second channel as well, so you can hear this in stereo. Okay, now it records on two channels, and I panned them like 50%. So. Yeah, and let's take the delay off and let's increase the speaker volume. So now you hear the speaker through this microphone, so bear with me with the sound. So you can have your speaker connected, be completely silent and then you can, you know, increase it. Like that. Conclusion. Th this is like jack of all trades. Many things in one box. Reactive load and actually different reactive loads. You can choose how the amp and the reactive load, how they see each other, how they communicate with each other. Power soak. So you can crank it and use it with the cabinet. Effect processor. Very handy indeed. Would I recommend this? Definitely yes. Would I buy this? Yes, if I wouldn't have the Sir reactive load, which still, I like it the best. Maybe because I'm so used to it. I mean, this is really good. I mean, you can, you can, you know, choose with different ways how the reactive load reacts, but I'm so used to how the Sir reactive load reacts with my amps that it's just it's like playing with an 800 coming home this is really i mean if i wouldn't have played with, with the sir i would be perfectly happy with this this is fantastic i have the bulgara power soak whenever i want to jam here at home with my cabinet i connect that but again this has similar thing the same and i feel that this is, and the Bulgara is cheap, it does the job, but this is like so smooth and it goes completely silent and you can program how this affects too, like when it's here, I think it's like 100%, but you can program this like when it's full, it's maybe only 50, it's pretty handy. Live use, you know, with old amps, don't have effect loop, I can have effect loop, I mean, I didn't have the delay in the loop or anything, it was just this inside, and then this has the effect loop, and I can connect whatever vintage delay there if I want. Line out for recording levels, setting other recording levels, and headphones. I can play with headphones, like with the Sir. So, if you don't have a reactive load yet, you don't have a power soak, maybe you don't even have audio interface, but you have fantastic tube amp, amps, and you wanna play them at home, wherever, record them. I mean, this is not, this is a bit expensive, I think. I think over a bit over 
thousand euros, dollars. But man, this does everything, at least what I would need with a device to work with two bugs. So yeah, strong recommendation. And Boss never fails. I love Boss pedals and, and stuff, so the quality and everything is it's top notch. Hey, I think it was a bit longer, but this is this device can do so much that I just wanted to make you see what what, what this does. So thanks for <laughs> bearing with me watching this. And if you like, you know, the drill, uh, thumbs up and, and subscribe and so on. Hey, uh, all the best and see you next time. Bye.